What's up, everybody? How's it going? This is the second part of a conversation that I recently had with my former engineering manager at Google. His name is Tom. He's an awesome guy. In the first part of the conversation, we talked about what an engineering manager does. And if you haven't seen that video, then go check it out. The link will be in the description and in the comments below. And otherwise, in this video, the second part of the conversation, we're going to discuss how you can become an engineering manager, the types of skills that you need to have, and we're gonna talk about a few other things as well. With that, enjoy the video. I guess now one question that I wanted to ask you, which I think a lot of people probably do have on their mind, because I'm sure that some people like having listened to this, they're like, oh, this actually does sound like something that I'd be interested in the future. I know that, that for me it was when I was at Google. So number one, how did you become an EM? Like, did you just fall into it? Did you actively pursue it? And then number two, off of that, do you have any advice for people who think they really want to become EMs, whether they're already at Google or not at Google? I, um, I, I took what I'll describe as an unconventional route. I mean, a lot of people in tech have unconventional routes to get where they're going and, and yeah. I definitely don't want to dissuade that at all. Mine, mine is one of them. Um, I... I've always been drawn to leadership, right? And again, I really do want to distinguish like leadership and management are two different things because everyone should be doing leadership and to some degree. And it's just a question of like how much of that you want to be your job. Um, but I was really drawn to leadership. And so when I left, um, when I left grad school, I actually got offered a job as a associate product manager at Google. And at the same time got offered a role okay. as a CTO of a startup. And, um, due to a lot of factors like location and timing and things that weren't actually related to the jobs themselves, I ended up going with the CTO role. Um, so I never had to make that decision about what do I want to be a PM or a CTO? Cause it was just kind of like, well, location and timing wise, it has to be this one. And, and it was great. Like I worked with great people. We had a ton of fun, but I kind of just became a manager directly because it was like, well, you're, you're the CTO. So you're going to manage like two or three people. Right. So it was, I, I skipped a few steps there. And that's not normally how it goes. Normally people become like a career as software engineers first and then do that. But when you're a CTO, you're like a software engineer. And then like three months later, you're a manager. Um, right. So I'd written a lot of code before that point, but all just like side projects and like high school projects and college projects and things like that. Right. So I, I knew what it was like to be a software engineer, but I didn't fully know what it was like to be a software engineer writing like Google quality distributed systems production code. So that's kind of how I fell into it. But the advice that I would give most other people, especially if you want to be a software engineer who understands how to write production level code first and then go <laughs> into this, is um, start looking for leadership opportunities, right? Because there are relatively few opportunities to break into management, but there's lots and lots of opportunities to lead, right? There's lots of opportunities to put yourself in a position and be like, hey, nobody is keeping track of this project. I'm going to write a doc that says all the different items we need to do. I'm going to organize it. I'm going to ping people when they're not, you know, when they're falling behind. I'm going to be the person who owns this, who makes sure this gets done. But I'm going to make it my responsibility to make sure it gets done and do that a few times. And eventually people will just kind of think you are a manager. And then when they need someone to become a manager, like you might be the person who falls into that role. Um, right. Or at the very least, then you can start getting feedback from your manager or someone else, uh, a mentee, a mentor, perhaps and say, how is this working? Am I doing a good job? What, what am I not doing well on? What can, what can I improve? Um, one of the things that's a little bit weird about management is promotions look a little strange. Um, so at Google, we try to break this down. We try to make it so that your promotion is distinct from your job, right? So like the better you're doing, you can get promoted and nothing changes about your actual job, right? At a lot of companies, you get promoted when you have a certain number of people or so on and so forth. We separate right. those, but still at most places and, and to some extent at Google too, right? Opportunities for managers are very, they're like a step function, right? Like a manager leaves and all of a sudden there's this new 30 person org available and they need someone to come do it. That's a huge increase in your responsibilities. But if that person yeah. doesn't quit, you know, you can't like, you don't incrementally grow quite the same way you do as when you're a software engineer. Right. And it's not like um, some sort of like, new technically complex thing can just be like, you know, thrown into a project. Although I suppose that like you could have suddenly, you know, two very difficult conversations to have and that create this whole dynamic in your team that make it more difficult, but it might not be necessarily, you know, outwardly 
a new responsibility. It's just part of your previous responsibility, but it just got harder. Um, I suppose like one thing that I, I don't know if you touched on, and I forget if you said it during your short introduction at the beginning, did you get hired at Google as an engineering manager straight from that CTO role or? Yes. Um, well, not straight. I had a quick six month stint in another company and then came over to Google. Um, but yeah, so I got hired directly as an engineering manager. And, and this is actually a perfect example. They brought me in and they were like, you're going to be a SWE for six months to a year. Um, you know, even though we're hiring you as a manager, you're going to write code so that you learn how things are done and all this. Interesting. And I joined okay. a team. And as soon as I joined the team, the tech lead on that team said, this is great. <clears throat> he said, I've been meaning to quit this team and now I can because now there's someone in place who can take it over. I don't have to feel bad anymore. So I'm going to go do this other thing I want to do and he quit. And then they were like, guess what? You need to become a manager today now. <laughs> so forget right. that whole thing about six months of writing code. You're not going to get to do that anymore. You're going to be a manager on day one. And it worked out great. I was super happy. It, it was a great fit and the team worked really well to like help me get into that role. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was great. But that's pretty uncommon. It doesn't usually quite work that way. Okay, that, that's interesting. And that, that, that means that like, it really um, supports your point that like, sometimes it's, you have this one opportunity that just presents itself, like an org is freed up or something, and you have the opportunity to, to be the manager that everyone needs you to be at the risk of sounding dramatic. Um, but cool. I suppose maybe on but a But you get there final... by like being the person who takes initiative and like takes leadership and and is doing that so that you want to be in that place where like when the management position opens up, you can go in and say, I actually know how to do this because I've been doing all the I've been playing the part of a manager. I've been doing all the manager job type stuff, you know. And now it's it's less of a transition for me to take this role because I already know how to lead. I'm already I'm already demonstrating that. Right, right. And I guess like just one additional question there, because I think it might be um interesting and useful for some people when you got hired as an engineering manager at Google, even if they had at the beginning, you know, the six months of coding or whatever, what do you feel made you effectively be qualified to be hired or even interviewed as an engineering manager versus as a software engineer? Was it just the fact that you had the CTO title before? Um, yeah, that's, that's the best advice, right? Everyone, start a company, give yourself the CTO title, just sit on your thumbs for two years, and then we'll... No, and no, then we'll it wasn't, it wasn't the, yeah, let me tell you, it was not the title. Google does not, Google does not care what your title was at the previous company. They really yeah. don't. Um, if anything, if your title looks too ridiculously inflated, they'll just throw it out. Um, because the titles are so different from company to company. Like, I have seen people accept jobs at startups because they were like, well, I could be a principal engineer at this startup or I could be an L5 at Google. I don't want to be an L5. I want to be a principal. And it's like, those are the exact same job, right? They're hiring. Right. You're the same person. You have the same skill set. They're hiring you for the same thing. One of them is just giving you a really fancy title. Like really ask those hard questions before you take a job about like, what are you going to make me do? Why is this a principal engineer? Like what distinguishes it? Anyway, um, we don't care about the job titles at your previous company at all. What we care about is, can you tell us stories basically about what you did as an effective leader and how it changed things, right? Um, you know, we're going to ask you about really difficult situations you were in, right? Uh, and if you come to us and you're like, oh, I would, you know, and you give some really generic answer that is clear that you've never been in that situation, but you try to make it seem like it is like, we're pretty good at figuring out when that's the case. And so what we want to know is who are you as a leader? Like, what is your philosophy? How have you acted in situations? How have you failed before? What did you learn from that? How are you developing to be a better leader, et cetera? So yeah. hiring levels at engineering managers is really hard um, because it's really hard to tell the difference between an L6 and an L7 manager based on the descriptions and not based on company size and all that. So we do tend to down level a little at hiring. But the good news is if you show up and you're really good at your job, you can get promoted pretty quickly. Yeah. So I guess this, this is uh, super interesting and it leads me to my final question or the final one that I can think of right now, which is, and you know, feel free to take your time or let me know if you don't want to answer this. Um, if you were in an interview right now, like imagine I were, I were one of the Google interviewers interviewing you for an EM role and I asked you like, what was the, the, the most difficult situation you've been in as an EM? Or tell me about a time that you had a, a really difficult conversation. How would you answer that? And of course you can keep things like anonymous or. Well, yeah, definitely always when you're in an interview, oh, yeah, yeah. always 
I'm really gonna be honest. That's that's actually a really good interview tip because I'm not sure that's obvious to everyone, but like we don't want to know that kind of specific. We want to know the specifics about what you did. We don't want to know about anything personal or anything like that. Um, right. So I'm glad I'm glad you asked it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to go into as much detail here as I would probably in an interview. But what I would usually talk about is I would bring up a situation like um, I had a situation where I was working on a project and then I would describe like the broad shape of the project. And I'd say and I had a senior TL and I had a senior software engineer um, and they could not work together. Right. There was a, a merge that brought two teams together and we were trying to fit the team together. And these two people just did not like each other at all. Um, these are the reasons why they didn't like each other, right? I would explain. And, and how did I find out those reasons, right? Did I talk to them directly? Did I put them in a room together? Um, and then I would say, what was the plan I developed? How did I execute it? So I might say, uh, in this case, I took um, those two people together, had one-off meetings with each of them to understand uh, you know, the, the problems, and I learned this. And then I brought them together for a three-person meeting. And I really focused on this part of it. I really focused on you know, what is next in each of your careers and how can you help each other get there? And that helped to pull out for them, oh, that they each thought they wanted to get to this role and they thought there was only room for one of them to get promoted. Ah, and now we had a breakthrough because now I could say, no, 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 you can both get promoted, but let's focus on each of your strengths and you can help each other get promoted, right? And so they, this is how I would break down the story and tell what specifically did I do at each step? What did the team do and how did I lean into that? And how did I lead to an outcome that wouldn't have happened otherwise, right? Like what was the impact right. of me? So that's kind of a short condensed version, right? But those are the hardest, most difficult parts. Like to answer your question, like when you have two people who just don't like each other, you know, yeah. and it's your job is to try to make people like each other, which is really hard. And sometimes you just can't. And then you got to figure out, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Right? So we'll probably ask that. Like you will get asked a question, like what was a situation that you were in that didn't end well, right? same story, but we couldn't get them to get along. And we had to find a new team for one of them and find a place for one of them to go. And how did we message that to the team? And what was the consequence? And, you know, did it work out? And fortunately, in my experience, it's always had a happy ending eventually, but sometimes it's taken a long, painful road to get there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, tough to think about, like, you know, any situation that you, that you might have experienced just as a human being in your life with, like, friends and maybe drama or conflict or whatever but when you put that in in the workplace with it with software engineers who happen to usually be this is a stereotype but pretty opinionated pretty you know like f straightforward and all that um it's very difficult but listen tom that was awesome i think this gave a, a great glimpse into what like an engineering interview or engineer manager interview might look like um and even the the job itself Thank you so much for answering all these questions. Uh, I'm sure that Thank you. This has been people a lot will have found this useful. Yeah. Any last words? Uh, you know, come work at Google. It's great. It's really, it's really wonderful. And we always need, we always need people who are going to be managers, and especially people who are going to take the discipline of management, uh, you know, and the responsibility that they have really seriously and thoughtfully. So um, I hope that people out there who are thinking about managers just realize you can have such a great impact on people's lives. Um, and it's all up to the work you put into it at the end of the day. Awesome. Well, listen, if I haven't convinced you in the past with my past videos about going to work at Google, I think Tom has. <laughs> Thank all you right, very Tom. much. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Take care. All right. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you found this useful, insightful. Don't forget to smash the like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.